Hi there, my name is Phil Dubnik. Uh, you can learn more about me at my website, phildubnik.com. Today I'm going to show you the best possible method for quantizing live multi-mic drums in Logic Pro 10. Now, Logic Pro has Flex Audio, and Flex Audio has an algorithm called the slicing algorithm, which is intended for use on multi-mic drums, but it's got a bit of a design flaw in that you can't really go back after the fact and tweak any of the edit points. All the crossfades, all the overlapping regions, all the, you know, all that stuff is hidden behind the graphic user interface. So all you see is the normal sort of wave files uh, as a whole, like one whole region uh, after you've quantized the performance. And while that might look a bit better, unfortunately that just won't do for anyone who is editing drums because um, you know, especially with modern mixing methods, the low level detail tends to come to the fore. And that low level detail, if it includes clicks and pops and artifacts, that's no good. And um, part of the reason why you want to be able to go in and tweak those edit points and make sure they're nice and clean is that you prevent stuff like that from happening. So the method I'm going to show you is going to be a bit more akin to that of using Beat Detective in Pro Tools. So this tutorial should be great for Logic users who just want to be able to edit multi-mic um, live drums in an efficient manner uh, that doesn't involve uh, leaning on the Flex Audio algorithms. And it should also be helpful for anyone who's a regular Pro Tools user who finds themselves using Logic and having to edit drums. So um, without further ado, here we go. All right, so the first step is going to be to mute this mic and go ahead and listen down to the performance with the metronome engaged. Now, truth be told, it's it's not that awful of a performance. And in fact, you know, it's a little bit shaky over here, but not bad at all, really. Uh, but regardless, we're going to quantize this performance because that is what the tutorial is about. So the first step we're going to do is we're going to choose which tracks we're going to use as a point of reference as far as where the audio is going to be sliced. So I'm going to start with the kick in because that's my one of my key elements. And when I double click that, it opens up the track window. Some of this, by the way, is going to have already been covered in another tutorial I already have posted on pocketing guitars and basses without using Flex Audio. So a bit of this, if uh, you don't see it covered here, you can go there to uh, check it out. Uh, it's a previous video on the same YouTube channel. Okay, so we've got this open. We're gonna switch view to bars and beats. All right, and then we are going to maybe zoom out a bit. And we're going to click here, and you'll notice that all these are being added, these uh, transient markers, where you want to probably go back through and double check them. Um, so we're going to zoom into the highest level, and then that will bring us by um, hitting Alt left and right. We can navigate to each transient marker. And you can see they're a little bit off, uh, you know, like some of them late. This one's a little early. But all the transient markers seem to be in the right place. So that's what we're really looking for there. And then we're going to do the same thing with this top snare mic. Um, we're going to click this button right here, which adds the transients. Uh, then we are going to zoom out so we can actually see. And it looks like it might have gotten all of them. But we're going to look in detail just to make sure that it's right on the money. And it looks like it is, actually. So we don't really have to do much there. If you would like more information on how to uh, edit or add transient markers if they pop up incorrectly in your experience, um, go to the other um, tutorial on guitar and bass pocketing. I go over that in more in depth there. but. Thankfully, we didn't have to do a lot there. So uh, we're done with that part of it. We're going to go to the mix window for a second. We're going to select all the tracks. And we're going to go to group one. And we're going to open group settings and select editing. 
And I've just had the experience that um, for some reason, this little Q reference button, which basically helps us determine which tracks are going to be the guides for the edits. Um, I've had the experience that it doesn't always work perfectly unless I hit record uh, in the group settings. I don't know why that is, but it's been the case. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. And I'm gonna hit, uh, I'm gonna call it drums. Okay, so now we've got the grouping together. And now I'm going to close the mix window for a second, and I'm going to go through and deselect anything that I don't want to use as a reference in terms of where the audio is sliced. So I've deselected everything but the kick in and the snare top mic, <clears throat> because obviously the kick in is going to be like the beater. It's going to be hit first between the kick in and kick out, and the top snare mic is is going to be you know. Um, should be the same, hopefully. Um, you want to have an equal distance of your snare top mic and bottom mic from the drum, uh, but it's generally going to be at least first or uh, exactly the same, hopefully. All right, so those are the points of reference, and that's what this little Q reference button is for. So we've got that all set. Now, I know I said we aren't using uh, Flex Audio, and we're not actually, but this is unfortunately you have to do this as part of the process, otherwise it doesn't actually function correctly. Um, you have to hit Flex Audio to engage it. I would go ahead, just as a precautionary measure, go for the slicing method. Now you're not actually doing anything with this, so it's it, I'm doing that purely as a sort of OCD <laughs> precautionary measure in terms of choosing what would be the appropriate algorithm if I were to be um, quantizing audio using the Flex Audio feature, but I'm not actually using that feature. I just uh, am setting it up to where it would be the least problematic version of Flex Audio if I did that. But the reason why we're even in flex audio mode for a second here is because we want to be able to slice at the transient markers, which if you right click, you'll see that. Um, and we want it to be able to do so and come out correctly. What we really want here is we want the slices to only be at the points of reference that we have chosen, which are the kick and the snare, the kick in and the top snare. And we can double check that. I've just moved the snare top mic closer to the kick so we can sort of see more clearly. Did it slice right at those transients? And it appears that it has, right? And since we um, we adjusted or we, we um, at least checked on uh, and uh, adjusted those transient markers to be correct, we don't really even have to double check them um, in our edit window because we already know that we checked them whenever we had uh, checked them in the sample edit window. So that's done, and that appears to have sliced everything across the board in the right place. So that's good. So now everything has been sliced according to where the kick in and snare top mics uh, are. So now that we're done with that, uh, again, this is a bit of OCD. I like to do it in this way just because I've noticed some quirky behavior where Flex Audio um, is concerned, even when it's not being used. So I like to make sure I do, I turn off the Flex Audio that way, and then I turn it off here as well. Okay, so now we've got all those pieces of audio, right? And now we are going to go uh, open up the list editor. You'll notice that... Um, because these are already all selected, you'll see these are all selected in blue. Even if I deselect this and reselect, um, they're not gray, but either way, uh, everything in the event window, these are all the regions, right? And everything that's selected in gray is obviously a region. And because they're grouped, um, they in their phase lock group, that's the key thing. Got to make sure, open up group settings and double check. Like, okay, we're in phase locked audio. That means that any move that's made to any piece of, of uh, audio on any one of these tracks is done to all the others exactly in the exact same way, exact same amount of movement. Um, nothing, you know, everything remains phase locked the entire time. So because we've done that, when we quantize, they should all quantize in the same way. And you'll see there was a lot of movement because we didn't really have um, a whole lot to fix here. But you saw some movement there um, where the regions shifted just slightly. Okay, so now everything's quantized. Now what we're going to want to do is we're going to deselect the audio, all right? 
Uh, now I'm going to, I don't even actually know why I do the audio. We didn't actually have to do that. I probably shouldn't have, but let me close the uh, list editor. Now I'm going to reselect all the audio. But what I do want to deselect here is the last piece of audio. And here's what I'm going to do. This is the little trick here. Um, I'm going to take each of these. I'm going to make sure I'm out of smart. And if I can, out of all this. And I also want to make sure I should have done this before, but make sure it's snapped to absolute value. Uh, um, but anyways, I'm, I'm getting out of, uh, I can either turn off snap altogether or just make it snap to samples. But I do want to make sure that it's not smart, that it's not bar, that it's not beat, it's not, you know, all those things. Now I've got all these regions selected. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to move it slightly over to just create a little daylight between each of those regions, right? Not a lot, just a, just a little bit. And there's a reason I'm doing this. In Beat Detective, you have what's called trigger pad. Trigger pad um, basically makes it so the transient is identified at the right point, but the beginning of the region is, uh, there's a buffer that's created so um, that whenever you move anything, there's a little bit um, of region before the actual transient. So it makes um, the subsequent filling of gaps and crossfades. Um, it avoids having those adjacent um, audio regions create unattended flaming. Um, so we don't have that feature in Logic, but by doing what we did just then, what we can now do is this. If I select all the pieces of audio, there's a shortcut. If you uh, if you want to pull it up, you have. Alt key here, and there's a, um, let's see, we can find it here. Boo, 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 boo. Right there. Trim regions start to previous region. Now, this is not a pre-assigned um, shortcut. I actually had to, or key command, I, I actually had to assign it. So I assigned it to F14. You can assign it to whatever you want. But you want that shortcut because now what's going to happen, because we created daylight between those regions, now all we have to do is we hit uh, F14, and now it's dragging the beginning of the regions to the end of the previous regions. And because we created that daylight, it does it does a similar effect to that trigger pad. So um, let me just find something real quick. Uh, so... Want to look here? All these are going to be, you know, they're going to have a little bit more space between uh, before the transient. Uh, you know, there's some spots where it could use a little help, but I wouldn't worry about that right now because of what we're about to do. So everything is pretty well set. Let's listen to it right now before we do any crossfades. Now you can hear some uh, clicks and pops. I also didn't mute the mic, but uh, let me just play that back one more time with the um, metronome so you can hear that a little better. So the clicks, by the way, uh, that, that you're hearing are actually not the... Um, those are due to the fact that we haven't crossfaded anything yet. So there's some edit points that are not clean. And those would get, um, those clicks or pops would get louder if we were to apply compression in, in the process of mixing in general, like those little low level sounds. That's one of the key reasons you want to, why you want some flexibility in terms of fixing things. So uh, we've got everything uh, region wise where we want it. it. The performance is quantized, but now we have to clean it up a little bit. So the first thing we're going to do now that we've got this where we want it is we're going to select everything but this last thing the easiest way to do that actually would be uh, command a and then just deselect the last one and then over here if we open that up we can choose equal power crossfades it's very important to uh, use equal power crossfades whenever dealing with drums because uh, equal gain crossfades would sort of degrade the symbols uh, in the case of sort of um, writing a crash symbol or the open hi-hats in a sort of a not pleasant way. You can hear a car passing there, I apologize for that. Um, anyhow, so now we've got that. I'm only gonna make about, let's make it like a five in terms of the 
crossfades. Those seem actually unusually big. Um, but okay, maybe that's just a graphic thing. All right, so everything is crossfaded. Uh, now we're going to take one more step. We're going to, I have this in overlap right now. You can do this in non overlap uh, at the beginning if that helps you sort of get a good gauge of where everything is. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the beginning of any one of these regions aside from the very first one. I'm going to pull it back just slightly. Again, making sure I'm not in snap, making sure that if I am in snap, I'm in samples, uh, just so it doesn't snap too far. And pull it back a little bit. So now there's some overlap. And now it's going to say this region contains inactive flex markers, which will be deleted if you perform the edit. Because again, we're not using flex audio. This doesn't matter. I mean, it's not going to change anything for us. So, uh, there we have that. Now let's take a listen. Now what that should have done by dragging that corner of the region over is number one, it makes sure that there's some overlap between the adjacent pieces of audio, but not too much. And also it moves the beginning of each region a little bit further away from the subsequent transient. So now we're going to listen. And there you go. You've got it down now. So what I would suggest at that point is to lock everything into place. Um, the reason I wouldn't necessarily, you could join all the regions by, um, let me turn those back off now. You could join them by just hitting J and J would, con um, by joining them or what used to be called merging all the regions, it would create <clears throat> contiguous uh, regions f per track. So it would make it basically into one solid region for my room mics, my overheads, you know, like each of them would just, it would just be come one performance again. But you don't necessarily want to do that for the same reason that we're not using flex audio um, slicing. You don't want to do that because you actually want the ability to fix anything or change anything um, at any point during the process until you're absolutely positive you're done with the editing of the drums. So what I would suggest is if you want to move on, hit lock because what lock will do is it will prevent anything from being moved until you decide to move it. Uh, and then that way, it's sort of no matter what, you're in a good place <clears throat> and you can just go ahead and move on to other elements. Anyhow, I hope you found this helpful. Be sure and visit me at phildubnik.com. That's P-H-I-L-D-U-B-N-I-C-K.com. Thanks. Bye.